What are you afraid of when it comes to Catholicism? Now, I know that might be a weird question to ask, but I'm noticing this level of harshness that people have towards the Catholic faith that makes me step back and go, where does this come from? And I think I'm understanding more and more where it's at. And I think it has to do with fear. So I'm here today to ask you that question. Why are you so afraid of the Catholic Church? Now, I get that people have intellectual disagreements with Catholicism. I get that people have theological disagreements with Catholicism. I mean, that makes sense to me. I understand that. But why are people so harsh so fast? Let me give you a couple examples. I'm looking at some comments on, on, on the channel here from some of the last videos. And, uh, you know, I got one guy who says here, God does not call us to be Catholic. He calls us to follow him. You fall under the same error that you are charging your former belief. Um, and then he goes down here and he says that because I mentioned Rob Bell, that's concerning. <laughs> I don't even know what I said about Rob Bell, but um, okay, here's another one. The Catholic religion is simply a cult while you mentioned being Christian. I've been studying the law for several years, which includes Bible law. I'm not sure what Bible law means. Catholic religion has no claim to Christianity. Why is simple. The Roman Catholic created the slavery system of the people you have today created a second realm in law via your mother's placenta, all factual. Okay, now I'm thinking this person's a little bit uh, crazy. There's a lot of all caps flying around here, lots of different things. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, this is just one example. I, I like this one right here. Dude, you keep sniffing and playing with your nose, that signals a coke habit. It also signals uh, hay fever, which I have, and I'm always dealing with allergy stuff. Anyway, you, you just go, if you don't, see it for yourself just read some of these comments people are reacting crazy now it makes me think like most of my time in the church i was um in the united methodist church mainly because that's how i was brought up my dad was a methodist pastor and so i grew up in that church so i never really chose to be united methodist but because that's where most of my friends were that's just sort of what chose me as far as the relationships i had which led me into ministry but there was a period of time when i became a um like a, a pastor in an evangelical free church and guess what? Nobody cared. I didn't get any nasty messages from people on Facebook. I didn't get any nasty phone calls. I didn't have friends, you know, freak out and <clears throat> ditch me or whatever. It was no big deal. Then for a little while, I was uh, working in an Assemblies of God church. Nobody cared. Nobody said anything. It was totally fine. Uh, you know, and then I went back to the Methodist church and, you know, same deal. It was like not that big a deal. But then when you become Catholic, it was like, what just happened to Keith? People began to freak out and they're still freaking out. And now that I talk about it a lot, it's amazing to me where all this comes from. And, and so I'm asking, why such hate? Why such passionate, you know, reactions? And, and I think ultimately, like I said, it's because of fear. Now, I don't mean be fear like people are going to come get you if you're Catholic, but I mean, there's a fear of Catholicism that I think runs deep within us. And I'll tell you why I think it's there. Because the claims of the Catholic Church put you in a place where if you recognize them to be true, then you just have to become Catholic. You have to. So what that means is if you don't want to become Catholic, you can't just kind of be one of those guys that's like, well, I, I appreciate Catholicism. I think it's cool. I, I you know, I, I like it and I agree with it, but I don't want to become Catholic. You know, you can't really do that because the Catholic Church makes the claim that no other church on earth makes. It makes the claim that it is the church founded by Jesus Christ and remains under the governance of Jesus' chief apostle, Peter, to whom he gave the keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16, 18, for those of you that say there's no Bible in my videos, okay? Now, I know the Orthodox Church would also claim to go back to the, to the beginning, and, and I get that too, but the Orthodox Church doesn't claim to be under the authority of, of Peter, so there, there's a different level of, of unity there that exists in Catholicism that doesn't exist anywhere else. And here's the thing about Catholicism. This unity it's a key part of it. Now, I know we all talk about we want to have unity because we really do believe that, you know, Jesus said to the Father, he prayed that they may be one. And in this idea of what it means to be one, Catholicism 
takes that literally to say one church. You know, Jesus never said, I will build my churches. He said, I'll build my church. So this idea of unity that comes to us in Catholicism isn't just a unity of some, you know, basic Christian doctrine out there floating around. It's a unity of really everything the church teaches that was passed down to the disciples and a unity of governance. And that's where we want to break down, because here's the deal. And this is ultimately where I think our biggest fear as human beings comes from. We don't want anybody telling us what to do. We don't want anybody telling us what to think. We don't want anybody telling us what to believe. And we don't want anybody else in charge of us. Not even the church. Not any church. And we recognize that that's exactly what Catholicism is going to do. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. For me, that was the thing ultimately that led me to become a Catholic, was I recognized that we need that as Christians. I recognized it to be biblical, and I recognized it to be logical. Because what I kept seeing over and over and over again in my life was this this breakdown of unity and this breakdown of submission to authority. Now, here's what I mean. When, when I was uh, in the Methodist Church, and there's a lot of things going on in the Methodist Church right now, you've probably seen them. People are, are having major disagreements about lots of important things, and the church is basically going to be doing this very soon. You know, it's going to be the Methodist Church can be splitting, and the reason why it's going to split is because people will not submit to authority. They they can't agree that there is an authority. You got one group of people, and this this isn't just true in Methodist Church; it's true in a lot of Protestant churches. You have some people who say, well, the Bible is our authority. And then you have other people who say, well, you know, we have to blend the Bible with other things, with our opinions, with our experience, and with, you know, what we think about things. And so even and even if you do have somebody who stands up and says, no, it's the Bible, it's the Bible, it's the Bible, then you'll have people that say, well, but how do you know that your interpretation of the Bible is the right one? You know, and then what do you do? You go, well, okay, let's look at my interpretation of the Bible. Does it make sense? Well, how do I know that it does? So then you have to start looking backwards and go, well, how long has this particular idea about what the Bible teaches on this particular thing or that particular thing been around? Which ultimately led me to become a Catholic because I recognize this important thing. I am not smart enough or adequate enough or whatever enough to take this book, this Bible, and be able to perfectly interpret it and understand everything that it means. I can't do that. And you know what? You can't do it either. And and that's why we need the church. Now, I know people say, oh, well, the church can't do it either, blah, 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 this. you You know what? Here's the deal. Jesus promised that the gates of hell would not prevail against his church. And if you read the history of the church and you see how the New Testament unfolds, and you talk about what the apostles were doing, it's it's very clear that that church continues to this day as the Catholic church. And I know people want to disagree and want to argue, and and I can't convince you of that just by saying it and, and, and all of that, but it doesn't make it any less true. But here's our problem, you guys. Here's where the fear comes in. As soon as we submit ourselves to that, then guess what? We have to do it, don't we? And that's hard. We don't want to do it. I, I know I didn't want to do it. You know, sometimes people ask me questions like, hey, Keith, you know, do you really believe in purgatory? Show me in the Bible where that is. Or do you really believe in the rosary? Show me in the Bible where that is. Or do you really believe in the priesthood? Show me where where that's in the Bible. And are you really going to do this thing or do that thing as a Catholic? Are you really going to believe that, you know, contraception is is, uh, evil and that, um, you know, there's... A magisterium teaching of the church that can tell you what you can and can't do in your own life and in your own marriage and in your own, you know, whatever. Start thinking about that. And you know what? For, long, for, for, for a long time in my life, I didn't want to do that, you know? And it wasn't even really for me so much about some of these doctrines. I mean, it was, but there was another level of it, you guys. And here's the level. I just thought the Catholic church was hokey, man. I mean, I just looked at it and I thought to myself, I don't know if I could make it. I don't know if I could physically do that. I don't like liturgy. I don't like traditional things and 
all this stuff and people wearing robes and and chanting and and just all this what I thought was like this weird stuff and then I saw these other Catholics that were trying to be like more modern you know and trying to sing like you know instead of singing songs from the you know 1270s they were singing songs from the 1970s and I'm like oh man that wasn't helping me either you know at the bottom the bot at the you know my bottom line was I just didn't want to be a Catholic and I was afraid to do it you know I was like I don't know if I can make it but ultimately what happened to me was that I had to recognize that my fear of being wrong, my fear of becoming some kind of whacked out person and like an idolater or something like that, it all really was ultimately a fear of not wanting to give up control over my life and give up control over what I wanted to construct Christianity to mean to me in my own mind. See, I think that's what a lot of us do. We take these ideas of Christianity and we construct them and we move them around and we create within them this vision of what it means to be a Christian that really lines up with what our own opinions and beliefs are. That's why there's so many fighting, right? That's why churches and denominations are splitting because people are different, which is fine. But what isn't fine is when we say, well, because I'm this way and you're that way, then our religion and our faith has to do this. And I just don't think that's the way it is. I think that that we can be different, we have our own opinions, and but that doesn't change who God is or what God's truth is and how it comes to us. And then we have a choice to make about that, don't we? Are we going to submit ourselves to it even if there are parts of it that are tough for us to swallow. Yes, it was hard for me to wrap my mind around some of the things that the Catholic Church teaches. It was hard for me to do that. And I had to get to a point where I said, you know what? If I believe that the Catholic Church is the church that Jesus founded, then even if I'm having a hard time with a particular doctrine or a particular practice, then the problem isn't with that, it's with me. And I think that's where a lot of us, we stop. We get tripped up, man. And we go, well, I don't agree with that. I don't believe that. Okay, big deal. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when you stand before the living God and, and you look at him and he tells you the truth about something and maybe you disagree with it. Are you gonna go, well, I'm sorry, God. I just disagree with that. That's cool, right? You gonna do that? No, of course not. You see, I think some people will and I think that's why there's a hell. Because I think there will be some people that even in the end will stand in front of God and to his face will say, nope, I'm not going to submit to you. I'm not going to give my life to you. I'm not going to give my beliefs and my intellect and my will to you. I want to do my thing. I think that is really what happens every day, isn't it? You know, we come before the Lord. We, we might, and it might happen in a, in a Bible reading, it might happen in prayer, it might happen in a, in a sermon, and it might happen in front of the Blessed Sacrament. It's scary to let down your guard, isn't it? And to let God take control of your life even when you may disagree about something, you may struggle with something, or you may feel out of place with something. But I'm telling you what, I, I, I'll tell you what happened to me. All of those fears, they just washed away, you guys. And I'm not making that up, it's true. When I just let go of that fear and I leaned in to trusting Jesus and trusting what he said about his church and trusting that this church that he founded and started was the right church for me, and for everybody, really, and that it was a gift to me, it changed everything. You know, fear is a tactic used by the, our enemy, isn't it? You think about how many times in the Bible we're told to not be afraid when we're encountering, you know, a, an angel or the truth of God or, or, or whatever. Fear not. You know, God hasn't given us this spirit of fear. And I know you might say, oh, well, you know what? We should fear God and you should be afraid of all the bad things about Catholicism. I want you to ask yourself a question. What are you really scared of? Why aren't you willing 
to let go of your own ideas and your own opinions and your own whatever, preferences, all of that, and follow Jesus into his church. What are you afraid of? I can't answer that question for you. You know, there's people that I talk to that are afraid of losing relationships or family. There's people that I, and I get that. There's people that I talk to that are afraid of, um, you know, making a mistake or having a wrong belief. I, I get that too. People are afraid of losing a job. You know, I talked to a guy the other day in that situation. He's like, he's a pastor. What if I, what, can I quit, right? I, I get that too. And, and I can't speak into your life as to how all those things will play out ultimately, but here's what I can tell you about what's been happening to me. Hasn't always been easy, but everything I was afraid of, some of it's come true, some of it has. But what I've gained by being a part of Jesus' church and the unity that I feel when I walk into any Catholic church, even a Catholic church that's that's got whacked out leadership or Catholics that aren't perfect, hello, you know, which is all of them. Even that, even the ones with play the 70s hymns that I don't like so much. I feel this unity of faith and this unity of governance and this unity with Christ that I've never felt before. And all the fear that I clung to for so long, it's gone. I still have fear, but it's a different kind of fear now. You know what it is? I have a fear that, you know, someday I won't make it, that I'll walk away or that I will fall short. You know, I don't fear what God will do. I fear what I will do because I'm a human being. I'm a sinner. Now, do I think that's going to happen? No, I don't. I trust God. I trust him with my life. I trust him with my faith. And I, I can't imagine ever leaving his church. But you know what? I do see it all the time. And I bet you do too. So what do I do about that fear? I lean into Christ even more. I put my faith in him even more. I, I wanna study the scriptures. I wanna study his church. I wanna form relationships with people who are gonna help me and keep me accountable and keep me in the fold. I wanna give my life over to it in every way that I can so that I'm so far away from the edge that that even if I slide here and there a little bit, I've, I, I'm, I'm way farther than away from the edge than, than if I'm in complete control of my own life and where I wanna go and what I wanna justify and what I want to say is okay because it fits my preferences. Hey, guess what? Been there, done that. Didn't turn out well for me. When I follow Christ and I follow his church, then you know what? There's really ultimately nothing to fear because he's given us everything that we need. He's given us himself. He's given us himself in, in a way that I never really understood before, but in the sacraments I do now. Let him take away your fear. Approach him. You know, he told Moses, take off your sandals for where you stand is holy ground. And, and look what that meant for him. What might it mean for you? God comes to you and he says, don't be afraid, but follow me. I challenge you to do that today. I challenge you to let go of that fear. Now I know again, there are those of you that are watching that are just like, Keith is the dumbest guy ever. And there's no way Catholic being Catholic is the right thing. Just, okay, you can be quiet for a second. Let me talk to those of you right now who you really do believe that the Catholic Church is the, is the one true church. You, you believe that, but for some reason, there's something in your life holding you back. A relationship or a circumstance. Something that's, that's just got you stuck. I've been there. I, I want to tell you this. Every moment that you delay obedience to Christ to come into his church, you slide closer and closer towards disobedience. You know, I remember learning that in a parenting class one time, you know, delayed obedience at some point in time becomes disobedience. And, and I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to, you know, manipulate you in any way. I'm just saying this, if in your heart, you, you know, he's there in the Eucharist and, and you know that his church is true. If you're there, then whatever you're holding on to that's holding you back, just drop it right now and run to him. Whatever objection you have, just let it go and walk into it. I promise you, but don't, don't believe me. He promises you that it'll be okay. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will be with you. And he will guide you into all truth. God bless you guys. I love all of you so much. 
Thanks so much for watching my videos. Whether you love me or hate me, I just thank you for being here. It's awesome. And, and I pray for each and every single one of you. God bless.